My name is Sagar Patagundia, and I am a Kentuckian. I came to the United States when I was 11 years old, back in 2002. My parents were um, fighting for a work permit, but they were rejected three times because my dad was overqualified for his position, as what the U.S. Embassy said. Now, before he left to, back to India to file for his work permit, he was rejected for his multiple visa back to the United States. So my dad was trapped back in India and wasn't able to come back since 2005 and I haven't been able to see him since 2005. In search of jobs and trying to keep a roof above my head, um, I moved to Kentucky, Eastern Kentucky, where I found a job to keep food on the table and save up money to go to college. I went to EKU, Eastern Kentucky University for a year and I moved back to Eastern Kentucky when I ran out of money and I spent over $12,000 at the university. And in 2010, I saw the Dream Act fail. And that's when I realized that I had no other way of uh, finding financial stability or finding an education moving forward. So in hopes of a better future, I thought I had more opportunities in a bigger city, so I moved to Louisville, Kentucky in 2011. In 2011, my mom decided she would go back in to take care of my dad, leaving me and my brothers here by ourselves. Um, to take care of each other and since 2011 I haven't seen my mom because she hasn't been able to return back and she's been banned for more for 10 years. In 2011 I started at University of Louisville and I co-founded an organization known as FIRE which stands for Fighting for Immigrant Rights and Equality. You know as I walked around campus people didn't expect that I was un un undocumented they just thought I was a normal kid you know a normal college student who had his parents paying for his school and um, just working his way through school. But they were wrong. I was undocumented and I was trying to, I was working under the table and saving up money to go to school so I can get a four year degree, just like every other student. And that was my main, that was the main purpose of my parents bringing me to America, which was to pursue a higher education. And once in 2012, through national organizing, we were able to pass DACA, which stands for Deferred Action for Childhood Arri Arrivals. When the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals passed, I was able to work at UPS and I thought they would pay for my school as I did my um, work third shift and go to school, but I had to file for FAFSA. Even being documented, I was, un I was unable to file for FAFSA because I was ineligible to file for it. Oh, you can only file for FAFSA if you have a green card or you are a U.S. citizen, and I was neither, so I didn't fall in the category. So that's when I found out I was doing third shift, and, you know, I was going to school, I had a clean record, you know, I was staying out of trouble, but just because I lacked a couple documents, they would not provide me with tuition reimbursement. And that's when I um, started a GoFundMe page, and I asked for my community for a support, and nobody knew about my status that was undocumented, and, like, I wasn't getting the same benefits as everybody else. And um, I, you know, there were supporters that through the community, through campus, that that helped me out for me to be able to graduate. And still, some people don't know that I graduated because of the people that are in my life and that supported me. I graduated. You know, people thought, oh yeah, you know, he, he got scholarships or, or his parents paid for his school, but really, it was it was myself and the community that that really pushed for me to be able to get an education. Now. I live with my brothers, my two brothers. I have an older brother who's 26, and I have a younger brother who's 23. We all help each other out, and they're going to school as well. And nobody knows. There's a lot of people that don't know about our status, that we're documented. And, you know, if whoever comes into the office next year can take it away from us um, in a zap, and we'll be left undocumented again. So whenever I started working a lot with the FIRE organization. We also started finding intersectionality with different movements. So we started working, doing a lot of work with the LGBT Center on campus. And a great friend and mentor of mine, which is Brian Buford, um, helped me out a lot to, to uh, just in the movement of immigration, but also uh, helped me grow in my, in my um, field and um, he was very pro-immigration and they were a great ally to our organization but also the movement so we found um, that you know coming out of the shadows was the same thing as coming out of the closet for um, LGBT folks so we found allyship within within that and then now we're moving forward into 
um, into, you know, uh, working along with the Black Lives Matter uh, movement. And Brian Buford has always been there. And uh, Brian Buf uh, Buford, he's, he's been with the campus, you know, he's always uh, put me in the front. He was like, yeah, Sagar, we need to share your story. We need to tell folks about this. Like, it's important that people hear this and know about this. That way they understand what kind of struggles do undocumented people face every day and that we don't know that you guys are walking amongst us and what we can do to help you all.